ways I've grown Blood in the sweat, tears and regret Made me hot as stone On my own, on my own Put the work in, yeah I earned it Woo! It's my destiny South Australia, I was born. Either way, all the way. In South Australia, round Cape Horn. We're bound for South Australia. Haul away, you rolling king. Either way, all the way. Haul away, you hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. I walked out one morning fair Heave away, haul away Was there I met So we just landed in Sydney about a couple hours ago Got picked up by my boy Vernon Cogswell Gonna be <laughs> hanging out with him quite a bit this For these uh, next few days And uh, I must say I'm sure glad that That he's driving Because they got the steering wheel On the wrong side of the car Just like old Crocodile Dundee said No wonder y'all getting so many accidents Steering wheels on the wrong side of the car. <laughs> Doing it up so it didn't back to front. We get good, get better at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But no, it's it's pretty sweet. It's a great flight over. Everything was like a nice smooth transition. They lost my bow. Except for the part. Except for the part where I didn't have a bow. When I came here and I landed, they didn't even know where it was. And so I uh I cried a little bit inside and as I kinda was gonna suck it up and leave the airport I see this guy walking across the airport with my bow case so I went running over to him yelling that's my bow and he was like yeah we were looking for you and I was like darn right you were but yeah everything's good now we're just on our way to uh, to the homestead there and gonna shoot the bow a bit and hang out and try to adapt and maybe get some sleep but all in all great start to the trip South Australia Brown Cape Horn In South Australia I was born We're bound for South Australia Call away you rolling king heave away To say I was excited was an understatement This hunt was over 2 years in the making with my good friend Vernon Cogswell Now Vernon is no stranger to JR as a matter of fact, you might have seen him in previous episodes hunting bear or your whitetail. But this time, it was on his home turf. And I wasn't just coming alone. I was bringing my friends, Dana and Darcy White, the Fatal Impact with me as well. This is a rock. How can you tell? Because it's a rock. Oh. You can tell by the way that it is. <laughs> From you. I wonder if I taught that kind of <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. Man. <laughs> While we were still dealing with a little bit of jet lag, Vernon organized a range day for us to make sure that our guns and rifles were all sighted in for the hunt. But with that, we got to meet a whole bunch of new friends and we got to shoot Simon's Quigley Down Under gun. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Oh, that one, perfect height. Just like
right, so it's day three here, and we we're about to make our way down to the river, and we're gonna set up some traps and hopefully uh, catch some crawfish here for, for lunch. So we're gonna make our way down there, hopefully see some deer along the way, and maybe get a little bit more footage and learn a little bit more about this terrain, but see how she goes. Heading out to Barrani Hills, we're gonna go out to a friend's farm and we're gonna see if we can catch some yabbies. So what are the yabbies? Freshwater crayfish with claws. Nasty little bastards. The sausage I didn't like. I know, but we're gonna see if the yabbies like it. That's the yabby bucket. That's, That's the yabby bucket. These little things that just hold this together. Yep. Right, I just, yeah, like I tried to throw it flat as I can. Bring it right back this way, try it so you hope it doesn't tangle on the grass. Gotcha. How about it? Yeah, we're just gonna toss it right up there. Yep. Look, honestly, you could probably get a full time job as a heavy net thrower if that was a profession. <laughs> Yabby net thrower, it's my new career right there. Yeah. If I can't make it doing a TV show, <laughs> coming back to Australia to throw traps. Yeah, that's exactly right. So what's the most you guys would like bring in for a haul? What would be like a good haul? Well, it's getting a little colder now, so we probably, they slow down a bit. But in the summer, I've seen those opera house traps that are probably like a third full there. It depends on how long the bait lasts. Gotcha. Um, and it depends on the population in the particular water course that Sometimes the ones close to town, they get hit pretty hard, so. Cool. <laughs> it's kind of luck of the draw, but yeah. So we just set out some, they were, what are they called, yabby? Yabby traps? for some freshwater crawfish is basically what these are. And we're gonna be coming back probably in about another, probably later this evening to come Check pick them up. the first time in a half an hour or so just to see if we got any quick ones, but yeah, leave them for a few hours and. Come back and see what we find and cook them up for supper or something like that. And yeah, it's pretty interesting. We don't, we don't really see a whole lot of this at home. So it's pretty cool. Alright, so this morning we're down here pulling the yabby traps. Gonna see what we have for a catch. Um, we didn't get back in to town in a very good hour, so we decided we were gonna come out and do them first thing this morning. So it's about 6 o'clock in the morning here. And so we're gonna get in here and see what we got for the day. Alright, first trap. <laughs> so there we go. Fair number in that one, eh? Oh, some good size lads, that's what we're looking for. It's a pretty ordinary shot at the back. I was gonna say. Not my best aim. <laughs> Here, quickly pick all these up, Kayla. <laughs> I'll let you do that. This guy's, I think it's a good size one right here. Caleb's first yabby trap pull. 
If it's empty, I would laugh. <laughs> well, it ain't empty. Well, there's a couple good ones in there. That's a ticket right there. Boy, there's a big one in there. Well, that can be your one for dinner tonight. So what would these be the equivalent of for like taste-wise at home? They're a shrimp type thing really, shrimp. to be fair. So. Cool. There you go. You gotta pick them couple up off the ground there, buddy. Where do we grab them? Not by the pointy end. Is so like right here? Yeah. He won't do much. Oh. Just, just grab it. He can't get to you from there. Oh, I beg to differ. That guy's got some reach. <laughs> Look at that sucker. He can go in there for a bit. So how many, how many yabbies do you think would be in like just a, a normal freshwater dam like this? Um, kind of hard to say. Not all of them hold yabbies because they're not the right type of like burrowing ground, clay dirt that they want to get into. Gotcha. Like, um, I don't know. There could be, there could be thousands. To be fair, like there's. Dams that we yabby when we were kids, and they just you could guarantee a bucket of yabbies every time you went there. So, so and others seem to get fished out, or um, I don't know whether they get a bit of chemical in them or what it is, but yeah, sometimes they vanish just as quick as they come. No pressure, Caleb. This is the one you set. So, I set. so if I don't have anything in it, it just shows that I maybe should retire from being a yabby trapper. No. We never know. Well, the weight on that line looks like it might be your next profession. Oh, there's a rock in there. <laughs> Possibly. A little bit of movement. Nice haul. That's the best one yet for a haul. Yeah. I don't want to talk you up, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Not the biggest size in any of these ones, but lots of numbers. Brag, but I've uh, done a lot of extensive training on yabbies. So, with many, many years of experience, I think it stands to reason that this pot will probably be empty. <laughs> well, we got something. Another similar hole to the last one, I think. Oh no, I got twice as many. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> you got twice as many. And yours were all bigger. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't think we'll eat any of those. No? No. I think we'll uh, let them grow bigger for the next time, man. You ate all my bait anyway, boys, so you're well fed. Cool how they can propel themselves, eh? How <laughs> quick they get going once they hit that drink. Imagine walking along the bottom there and one of them suckers claps onto your toe. <laughs> well, <laughs> never really had that happen, <laughs> to be honest. But once they're out of water, they get pretty handy at bloody nipping. There's been many a adolescent Australian child with a little bit of meat missing out of the side of their finger. <laughs> So after our first haul of yabbies, it's, uh, we've come to the consensus that uh, I should go pro. And uh, Vernon's got a hold of his yabby over there, so we're gonna move back to this side of the truck. <laughs> yeah, mama, I think I'm going pro. I'm gonna be a yabby, yabby catcher now.
we're back in beautiful Australia here today. We came to this property yesterday and did some scouting. We got the go ahead to go after the goats, which is pretty awesome. There's some pretty gnarly looking goats out here. And uh, so we're gonna go in, see if we can get some close to them, get some good footage, and hopefully we're coming home with a big, uh, a big billy. This is a completely different area for me, so I'm gonna try to learn as much as possible. It's gonna be a pretty sweet day. I'm looking forward to it. Let's go get them. So there's a group of goats on the other side of this valley here. We're gonna walk to this other side of this property here. There's a whole other side of this hill that we wanted to get eyes on. At the very least, we're gonna follow that fence line back up top here, and we'll be on the other side of those goats. Hopefully there's a billy on the other side. If not, we're just gonna make our way up up to the top again. I think we get eyes on something. So we're gonna keep moving here. Hopefully, hopefully be up to the top. So these are called, what are these ones called? Echidnas. Echidnas. They're like Australia's version of the porcupine slash hedgehog. Yep. They're, he's just nestled in here. There's his little nose. A stalk right now, trying to get around on some on some goats. But this is just so cool. You can't not stop and see this. He gets curious and he lifts his little head up and you see his little nose stick out like he's about to do it again. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have spent as much time with that echidness as I did. But it was a whole new animal to me, and I was just infatuated with it. But we were on a stock for a goat, and that was our main plan. We were able to get in front of the group of nannies, and our hope was that a billy was going to join them by crossing in front of us as their main trails going up the mountain were still in front of us. As we were sitting glassing, Vernon caught movement behind us, and the billy had snuck in on another trail. I guarantee he was better the whole time, mate. It was just a matter of those others making a move. He's the one you're waiting for. He's wet.
Well, unfortunately for us, the Billy came and got his herd of goats and took them back on the trail that he came in on. So we had to tuck our tail between our legs and start making our way back down to the truck. Another unfortunate thing was that was our only chance that we were going to be able to have at those goats as we were going to be moving to a whole other territory in the morning. Probably for a, lot of, a good portion of the day, I bet you they've been back and forth chasing them. watching to see if they come down. One looked pretty decent. But with changing territories means a couple things. New animals and new beginnings. And the beginning of one heck of a road trip. Ready? Yeah. All righty. So we are finally here after a long, long drive. We're able to get a meal in us last night, had a good night's rest. We can hear them already croaking up in here this morning. So we're gonna hop in the truck, go for a bit of a drive and get on top and hopefully be able to make a move in on them, make some calling and, and see what we see. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty excited, pretty excited for this morning. I'm really excited to see what this area and these animals have to offer. Looking forward to it. So we have we have one croaking up at the top here. He's been yelling at us all morning. And really the only way to get to him with our wind is going down, up and around. And to get by him, God, you can hear him going again. But to get by him, we have to go past some pigs. So if I get the opportunity I'm going to make some bacon.
But as every bow hunter knows, you come up with a game plan and it'll drastically change. As we were stalking in on the pigs, we ended up bumping out two fallow deer that ended up running towards the fallow that was croaking near the top. So we decided to head back to camp and come back in the evening. heading back in right now um, heading right back to the spot where we saw all of those stags this morning and uh, hopefully the wind starts dying down here and we'll be able to make a move and maybe do some calling on them hopefully bring them in close and be able to get them done with the bow I can't get over how beautiful this country is and how vast it is and the amount of animals is just incredible like you couldn't couldn't pick a more perfect spot to go hunting these animals. It, it is unreal. Our only problem that we have right now is the fact that there is a spraying airplane that you will see about to fly over. we can just get in and that guy will leave us alone for the night and I'll shoot something otherwise I'm gonna shoot him down somebody forgot their glasses it's okay buddy it's not like we should be hunting or anything
footage you can hide. This, this guy just did not want to break the barrier. Like he, uh, he held up just down at the bottom part there, but we'll be back in the morning and we're gonna get this guy. All right, so we're heading back to the same spot where we were yesterday. We had that one, uh, that one stag that was roaring at us, but he just really wasn't coming out. So we're gonna try to get back in there and challenge him a little bit more. We're gonna be a little bit more aggressive today and see if that works out for us. But time's of the essence, so we're gonna try to make our way back in there as soon as possible. At least now we don't have an airplane above us. So we gotta keep eyes on that deer. Minty fresh.
perfect. Yes. Stay on Good work, bud. The monkey's off you. I saw that. I saw it. I just hope that branch wasn't blocking my shot. <laughs> that looked awesome. Oh. That doe call that stalled him in the new mute stopped. Holy smokes. He. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That is not the biggest one out here at all. But I'm not letting an opportunity like that. That was awesome mate, good so shot. He was at, I ranged, ranged him at- Eight yards? Oh no, like he's he's about at 15 there. Okay. But when I, I had put it my pins at 30. Come, that other one's croaking still down here. Yeah. I ranged him at 30, like from here. And then we ran up there, I was yelling at you. I was like, I, know, him. I couldn't grab it around. Yeah, but no, it's good. That was fast. Yep, that's how it happens. Shot. When I took the shot, he was standing through here. A complete pass through. Oh, one lit knot seems to come. That's hot, buddy. long in Australia one of the big things about this that's different from back home is that you can shoot multiple animals there's no tags there's nothing like that and uh, there's another stag down here that's very large so ow, that's a sharp tree and um, so if we get a chance at him we're gonna shoot him also. But being, that there's, being that there's so many in here. There's so many. There's so many. There's there's deer all over the place. What have we seen for stags so far? Six this morning? Yeah. Six this morning, so. And we just started. The sun's just cresting. So let's get down here. We'll follow this in and we'll go and see if we can uh, find this other guy. All right. So I can actually see my my buck from here. Um, there's something that my little sister Shane taught me. And it's when you uh, when you kill an animal, you respect it as much as possible. And what she does is she picks picks its last meal for it. And so I'm gonna take this up to him and. So show some respect to this animal and put it on its way. What a beautiful animal.
Congratulations, mate. First fellow back on the rear. Thank you. It's a, a pretty surreal moment, actually. Like, you don't, you don't really imagine actually getting one until they're in your hands. At the start of this trip, I was quite sure this wasn't gonna happen at one point. Just the way everything was just transpiring, it just didn't seem like this was gonna happen. We're what, day three into the actual hunt? Yeah, and it's just, uh, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal to see something like this. Yeah, this might not be the biggest fallow deer in the world, that's for sure. But I'm sure proud of this deer to be able to harvest something like this with the bow, that's an accomplishment to me. And there's still a lot more hunting left to do, And but this, this is my first fallow deer. And I could not be any more proud of it. It's a, uh, it's a pretty sweet feeling. Yep, well done, buddy. There's something to be said about hunting camp. The camaraderie, the stories, and the overall fellowship just can't be matched. Sitting around the fire and enjoying each other's company with a delicious meal in the oven and the sounds of fallow deer croaking in the distance. If you were to ask me, that's a pretty perfect night right there. Now this isn't the end of the story. As a matter of fact, this is just the beginning. We are on our way to a whole nother region with completely different terrain and animals. But you'll have to wait for part two. We are just relentless.